material. And this plume rises to a certain level and then becomes neutrally buoyant and stable there. And so with this, there's all sorts of perspectives of what we do we see in the far field. And there's so many unknowns because nothing like this had ever happened. There had never been a deep water blowout. 200 meters, not, not 1,600 meters. So it's a, a huge difference. So what are some of the unknowns that we had when we were first going out there? What are the depths of the stable layers? We didn't know exactly what was going on. What are the concentrations of the hydrocarbons? Uh, what are the phases of the oil? Uh, what is how big, uh, and is it actually dissolved in the oil, uh, in the water, or is it actually a particle? Um, what are some of the molecular distributions? That is really important relative to the toxicity. Is there a lot of PAHs? What is the distribution of the hydrocarbons? What composition of them? It's all critical. And then we'll come into aspects of the isotopic composition. So there was, there was fuel for thought, um, and we knew something uh, like this was actually going to be the case. Uh, so we, uh, with Ernst, uh, put together, uh, Ernst and I put together this, the May 20th uh, cruise out into the Gulf, uh, where we uh, thought we were going to focus in on, initially on the, sort of the, the northeast side of the wellhead, where everybody else was focusing on the southwest side of the wellhead. Well, the reason why, it comes back to a lot of uh, what Bob Weisberg was talking about with the Ocean Circulation Group. We had some of these, uh, these subsurface water trajectories. So again, these, these inert particles would be put into the water and you could track their, their, their migration. And so at the 400 meter and at the 1,000 meter, there was a lot of evidence to suggest that there was going to be transport both to the southwest but also to the northeast. And the, because there was a, a cruise that came just before us that recognized that there was potentially subsurface oil, but unfortunately they sampled with plastic. And as a consequence of that, you can't analyze oil through plastic, so it's essentially nullified. We said, we know it's out there. Uh, but we decided to go to the Northeast because the trajectories to the Northeast had a much greater impact on the continental <laughs> exploding shelf and potentially impacting, of course, the Northern Gulf region as well as Florida. So the, cru the goals of the first cruise uh, or the goals of the cruise at that point were essentially to surf, search for this sur surface oil. So it was really quite an, uh, a, a, a discovery type of a cruise. And again, this is sort of one of the templates. So how do you search for oil in the subsurface? Well, if it's dissolved, it might not be that easy, but if it's actually sitting as, a, uh, as particles, indeed it could behave like a, like a fish finder, and you would be able to see those those particles, and indeed, as, as Ernst identified before, this is a, uh, uh, a sonar reading, and what you can see very clearly is you can see the oil sitting about 50 meters above the, uh, above the sea floor at 450 meters. Again, this is the ocean floor, and right here is one of the subsurface oil layers. In addition, we could deploy sensors, and some of these sensors can measure things like red backscatter, which gives you a signature of how rich the particle density is. And so when we deploy these instruments, we can see the surface oil. We can see a, a, a narrow peak at around 400 meters, but we can also see a broader peak that expanded between 1,000 and about 1,400 meters. So there was the inclination. Remember, if you, if you're starting to put your career on something that looks like a line on a screen or a silly little blip uh, in, a, in a sense. And so typically what we do is we send over one of these rosettes, uh, a rosette in CTV, and that's a, a conductivity temperature depth sensors. We've added many more sensor arrays onto this uh, device, but you can see these uh, in this radar uh, a mechanism for collecting waters at every individual depth that we desire. So these instruments are, are, are essentially lowered from the ship and that can measure all of these ocean properties and we can collect water. And this is some of the main tools uh, that we can use to collect some of the subsurface uh, oil. When the water comes up, this is what you see. It's absolutely perfectly clear. So this is not your uh, uh, vinaigrette. You, there was no oil sludge in the subsurface. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there, oh my gosh, uh, maybe we're making this big mistake. And what are we supposed to do? So you realize quite quickly that when things are very small, they disappear. And so you can still have an enormous amount of material in there that's just at a very small particle size and you can't see it. And as a matter of fact, when we filtered about 15 liters of water, this is the kind of coloration on a filter that we would get. And this is 
again, not green color. This is more of a yellow-brown color. And so samples that were filtered, in this case from 1,000 meters uh, water depth, uh, and they were collected by the Rosette system, uh, it showed that these were particles that were collecting on filters. If it was dissolved in the water, it would pass straight through the filter. But indeed, we were able to trap them on the filter so we could get an understanding that they were small, about less than 100 microns, because that's what you can see with your eyes. Well, about that time, you know, we come back home and we have our filters and we're ready to go. And uh oh, Jonathan, did you do that? I don't know what to say, you guys. It looks good here. Just getting the good part. But we can. Did I do something? a bowl. Yeah, the projector. Must be the projector. Yeah. Okay. Hey, um, I don't know if you did. A blown ball. <laughs> Just say As you that. can easily see, if you can see it. So when we came back, essentially what we had is we had this collection of filters that were stored in some aluminum foil uh, in a satchel in the freezer. And we had these maybe five or six deployments of the CTD where we had these sensors and they gave us these signals. And so they put a, so a lot of pressure coming back from that cruise and all of a sudden Tony Hayward comes out and says, of course, there is no oil on the surface. Oil doesn't stay underneath the water. Oil flows. And so that put a direct pressure on us as academics to really recognize whether this was oil or not. And so, okay. No, you could talk from your slides at least. Sure. <laughs> Again, you know, we don't normally have get this much attention or feel that much that much pressure. There was over a hundred million uh, either news reports or video releases that came out with USF and subsurface oil and everybody was looking down our neck. And of course, this was a pretty stressful week in the laboratory, you can only imagine. Uh, but we knew what we were looking for. Again, I knew the, the background. I knew how to search for the chemistry of hydrocarbons and how to uh, isolate them and analyze them. You still need your mic microphone. Oh, sorry. Um, well, if you could see, uh, I would be showing you how to be a chemist. And uh, one of the tools that we use uh, to identify uh, organic material, natural organic materials, whether they be from uh, algae, whether they be from terrestrial plants. Should be good? No. Should be good? What's going on here? I don't know what's going on. Maybe I have. I was the ball had the flew flew a couple of days ago. I don't think it's that severe, though. It's <laughs> back in what about the other mic? That's out, too. <laughs> Is it plugged in? Yeah, the whole AV system is good. You want to help him? No. This would be a very good time to write your questions. <laughs> I turn them in. Just pass them down the aisle and we'll pick them up for you. Our case is a woman's touch. What is it about us women? So we're ready to go. So Tony stepped up and had this brilliant thing that oil is on the surface, there aren't any plumes, in spite of what you all say. And you know, this was again a, a bit of a stressful situation. Uh, we you. never get that much attention, ever, uh, no matter what we do. So